Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is the Savage Nation live. And Michael's back with my appalling sarcasms, my unmitigated scorn for the political class of asses. We're just playing some uh, 80s. Play the music. You don't have to die it out. Warm you up. Post Labor Day show on the Savage Nation. Just back from Los Angeles. Everyone has Los Angeles stories, as do I. Here are my notes. Talk about L.A. trip, Motormouth Girls, Sylvester Stallone, French Strongman, French Clocks, all aboard. Let's play a little more 80s music so we get the people uh, lined up. I don't even think they're back from vacation. As you all know, most Americans are on five to ten day vacations around weekends. I don't know when they work. I don't know who works. I don't know how anyone makes a living. I don't know how the country goes on. Uh, the socialism has crept to such an extent that nobody works except me. I seem to be the only one who works. Now it is true that some now that was bad timing, screwed up my flow. Thank you. No, don't raise your hands. You screwed me up. That's all. Now it is true I can be pugnacious and opinionated. But never forget that I can also be elegant and intellectually fastidious, which is why I'm successful. In other words, anyone could be a loudmouth like you. Anyone can be pugnacious and opinionated. That's nothing. A truck driver opens his yap on you or a gas station attendant or some liberal loudmouth lawyer. He can be pugnacious and opinionated, but they have no elegance and no intellectual fastidiousness like I do, which is why I'm famous and they're unknown. So I come back from L.A. and, oh, the news is so horrible. It's enough to stop a, stop a clock. Muslim flight attendant says she was suspended for refusing to serve alcohol. Okay, I don't even have to read any further than that. You know why they put her up for the job. You know why the Council on American Islamic Relations had this converted Muslim take a job as a flight attendant? Just to make you stop drinking liquor. My opinion, one man's opinion. You know why Hillary has broken Europe open like a broken egg to flood it with Muslims under the guise of being asylees. You know what's going on, don't you? Hey, if you want to make an omelet, you got to break a few eggs. Hillary learned that in grade school. Why is Obama flooding America with uh, illegal aliens from south of the border? Hey, you want to make an omelet? You got to break a few eggs. They learned that in grade school. Why are the people so damn stupid that they put up with these idiots? These criminals, they're criminals destroying the, the Western world, destroying it in front of your eyes. Why do we put up with it? Because we're weaklings and we don't deserve anymore. We deserve to lose everything that our ancestors gave us. You don't deserve a nation. The stars have not dealt me the worst they could do. My pleasures are plenty, my troubles are too. But all my two troubles, they reave me of rest. The brain's in my head and the heart in my breast. Oh, grant me the ease that is granted so free. The birthright of multitudes give it to me that relish their victuals and rest on their bed with flint in the bosom and guts in the head. Anyone who knows who wrote that will get an, an immediate free copy of my next best-selling book, Government Zero. No one knows who wrote that. I did not. So I went to L.A. for the weekend. I happen to love L.A. I'm one of the few in San Francisco who admit it. Most people in San Francisco seem to like the city as it is. I don't. I hate it. I hate San Francisco. I moved here in 74, and I saw a once-tolerant city taken over by a group of perverted psychopaths who are the most intolerant people I've ever seen on the planet. San Francisco is the most intolerant city in the world. There is no diversity of opinion permitted. It's run by a gang. It's run by a simple gang of thieves who speak the lingo of liberalism. They're all for the illegal alien, but they hate the citizen who votes and pays taxes. You get the picture. I don't have to go down the litany to show you how good I can be with the old tongue. The old tongue twisters. Judge orders Christian clerk freed from jail. I put the judge in jail. He was afraid because there was going to be a protest outside that skinny twerp's church, outside his courtroom today, that rat, that rat judge who jailed her. I had a, I had a lawyer on last Friday who was a mafia lawyer for 30, excuse me, organized crime lawyer 
for 30 years. He said he's never, he has seen murderers released on bail. He could not believe that this criminal judge in Kentucky put this poor Christian woman in jail because she wouldn't grant marriage licenses to homosexuals. Unbelievable. So he got frightened that the mob is liable to see what he looks like and trail him home. Yeah, well, let me stop right there. It's a national talk show. So let me go back to my L.A. trip. Because there's some interesting things, that's all. And let me tell you something I learned on the trip, by the way, if you're still listening, if you haven't changed the dial yet for something else, something important. I don't know what else is more important than me. I mean, how, what would you rather listen to right now? Fox News with the leg, leg crosses and the twitching? What, what are they going to tell you? Murdoch is a senile old coot who said that Joe Biden's going to win. Murdoch's a, 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 a senile coot. He built a huge empire, and just like the West itself, he's losing it. Murdoch, Rupert Murdoch, who I affectionately called Moloch a number of years ago, and I don't know why he would take that as an offense, just because I called him Moloch 10 years ago, is that a reason to ban me from Fox News and have criminals and degenerates and pimps and perverts on it on a regular basis as guests? Why would they ban me? Just because I called the boss Moloch? Most people don't even know what Moloch means. Why would he get mad? It's not a dirty word. It's an affectionate term. Moloch is senile by all estimation. I go to L.A. I'm in L.A. and I learned something about talk radio that I didn't know. I see already the lights are on, like the pinball machine. 855-407-282. Some people know the numbers. Some don't. Regulars will not get on the show. You can change your name 18 times. We know your voices already. Hi, I'm Bob from New York. I'm Bill from New York. I'm Sam from New York. I'm Bill from Connecticut. I'm the same jerk every show. Not on my show. Regulars, please don't call. Because we really don't care what you have to say. Call England better. London calling. Go, go talk to the Islamists in London. They threw the nation into the toilet because they were too refined to open their big mouths. Someone knows the author of that poem. Wait, hold off on that. I'm not ready for the contest yet. What was I going to say? Oh, so I'm in L.A. and I learned something about radio that I didn't know. I'm sitting in my house in L.A. And the studio's not hooked up yet. It will be soon, and I'll be doing shows from there because I'm going to live there part-time because I like L.A. I'll tell you why I like L.A. compared to this dead zone called San, Fran uh, San Francisco. Uh, and I'm listening to my ye yesterday's show, the Labor Day show, which was a best of, put together by the team. And I started to hear myself in a different way, and I realized something. As intellectually fastidious as I can be, it's very hard to listen to talk radio if it's fact after 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 fact. Now, I don't do that as a general rule because I listen. I know that people can only take so much. The problem most juniors make, the amateurs, the, the uh, Bush leaguers in talk radio who think that they're geniuses make in radio is that they think that they're college professors and that people are hanging on their every word and they're going to give a final exam and that you have to remember every word that they, they uttered that came squeaking out of their nose. And you have to remember it and write it down, and they're so smart in every detail. No one can remember that crap. Radio is primarily a medium for easy listening. Even uncomfortable facts can be easy listening if you know what you're doing. So I listened to my show, and because it's a best of, the humor was not in there. The cadence and timing between sets was not in there because you've got to put the thing together. So I said, just take the good, smart stuff and put it together in four, eight, 12 pieces. So that's what they did. But I said, if I did this every day, nobody, nobody could take it. There's too much information. You see what I'm saying? So I learned that. Sitting alone in a room, I actually heard myself for the first time. And I said, this guy is good. I would listen to him. I advise any amateur in talk radio, even if they've been in the business 27 years, to, to listen to themselves in a dark room on a replay and see what they sound like in the year 2015 going on 2016 and you may learn something that's all everyone can use a little criticism especially self-criticism anyway that's just a side note so i go out a couple of nights first night i eat in dantana's which is an italian restaurant on santa monica boulevard i believe you know used to be a hot spot for a, i don't know who what do i know i like i like old line red sauce I don't like uh, effete modern Italian restaurants at all. I can't stand them. I don't like light cuisine. I don't go to restaurant, Italian restaurants for light cuisine. I want light cuisine, I'll go somewhere else. 
I'll go to like a green restaurant. I go for heavy cuisine. I like 1950s red sauce. So I go to Dantana's, overpriced, of course, but so what? And it's a scene. They don't, everyone shoot loud. Like you don't know what loud is till you sat there. Everybody's a star behind their car. Everyone's a movie star. They pull up in their Mercedes and they, everyone's a star behind the bar. Everyone. Everyone's uh, so big you can hardly imagine it. Everyone's looking at everyone to see who they might have seen. And no one's there of any note whatsoever except me. And they don't know me because I, I'm only a radio host. <laughs> you know who actually likes me is the head waiter. The Hispanic gentleman who's a busboy loves me in there. Actually, he's more than that. I have a huge following in L.A., even though I'm not on, on, a, on a station in L.A. Isn't that funny? Because I used to be on and I had bus ads. People start. So anyway, so I'm in the restaurant. I enjoyed the food. There was a woman in her 30s, good looking, I guess, with a guy maybe 20 years older than her, sitting across from us. We were a party of mm, four. I, I tallied it. I got a, a, a watch going. I put the iPhone on timer. She did not stop motor-mouthing this guy for one hour straight, a minimum an hour, maybe more. I was in the restaurant two and a half hours. Took 30 minutes to, after the drink to even get a, a, a fragment of food because it's the old-style restaurant where they make you drink first. They make you tortured because restaurants don't make any money on food. They make the money on the one glass of wine that the Schmendricks buy or the drink for $12 that cost them four cents. So, you know, if you keep them dying to sit there eating bad bread and you had another drink, you already made your nut. You paid the rent. But the food was good. But she didn't shut up. It was like... So I turned to the people at my table and I nudged, I nodded. I said, over there, look at her mouth. Watch. She did not stop. I had not seen a motor mouth like that since I left Queens four, de four decades ago. I had cousins like that who I don't speak to. Nice girls, but you can't, it's impossible to be in a room with them. You lose your breath, your oxygen goes, your oxygen leaves your lungs. Ba, 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 ba. And Schmuck sat there, the guy she was with, he didn't say a word for one hour. So all I could think as I glanced over is he's just trying to play the game to see if he keeps his mouth shut long enough, you know, maybe he'll go home with, I don't know what, I don't know, I asked some of the women at the table, are they dating? I said, have you noticed this guy hasn't said one word, I whispered? And the girls at the table said, no, he was older than her and he was looking at every girl in the restaurant. He was scanning. It's probably a business meal. Or like, she, he's, her fa she, he's her father's friend. And this is one of the things I like about L.A. is that you look at people and you try to figure out who they are. Not movie star thing. Because they talk. See, here's the thing. Even though she didn't shut up, she didn't stop talking, which is good. San Francisco, they're mute. San Francisco, they're afraid of talk. San Francisco, they think if you talk, you're low class. San Francisco has no idea what communication is, even though they think they're specialists in communication. If you talk to a stranger in San Francisco and try to make a mild joke, they call the police. They think you insu uh, assaulted them. In L.A., I can talk to somebody who speaks only a Pars Farsi and get along with them. Without even speaking the language, they understand me. I can speak to someone who speaks Swahili and, and the guy understands me. Anyway, so that's one thing happened in the rest, and that's A. Food was okay, not as good as the last time. The, the prawns went down a certain amount in size. They used to have the biggest prawns in America. And they had a sweetness to them. A sweet came off them. No, this was already a Labor Day job. It was in the showcase a little too long. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I actually hated the 80s, now that I think about it. The miserable 80s. The worst decade of my whole life. Anyway, I won't go into that. So I was talking about uh, this and that, L.A. I'll do the news later. I'm not in the mood. First of all, most of you are not in the mood. Secondly, you can read it all on the Drudge Report in three seconds. So what do you need me, me for, to be a parrot? <clears throat> a real intellectual genius, the talk sir. They read the Drudge Report like they wrote the news. <clears throat> what else did I want to say? Oh, I, I said, so I said I could speak Farsi to someone. I mean, someone who speaks Farsi understands me in L.A., even though I don't speak the language. In San Francisco, they don't understand a word anyone says to them. Either they're on drugs. I don't know what they're on. Liberalism. Obama.